Over the last several years, the spread of misinformation and false news stories online has become a major concern. Many researchers have focused on the role of motivated beliefs. An individual's desire to believe stories that are in line with their ideology may prevent them from being skeptical and make them more likely to share those stories with others. This paper studies these dynamics in the absence of motivated beliefs. When there is no intrinsic motivation to believe something, to what extent are individuals able to detect lies? And what are the implications for what kinds of information are shared and believed? To answer these questions, the authors conducted the following lab experiment. Individuals were recruited to participate as senders, and each recorded two 30-second videos, one true and one false. For the true video, the sender was shown a real newspaper headline and picture and asked to describe it. For the false video, they were shown a blank screen and told they could make up a news event. In both cases, senders were incentivized to convince viewers they were seeing a real news event. For each of the videos they recorded, senders received $10 if they convinced a viewer that they were seeing a true news event, and $0 if they did not. These videos were then shown to a separate group of individuals labeled receivers. For each video, receivers had to guess whether the sender was lying or telling the truth and were paid based on their accuracy. The first key finding is that receivers had almost no ability to correctly classify lies and truthful videos. Their accuracy was between 50 and 53 percent, which is not significantly different from the 50 percent chance of guessing randomly, and they made both type 1 and type 2 errors. Moreover, these results do not reflect simple noise. Receivers made systematic mistakes when predicting a video's truthfulness. Using facial expression recognition software, the authors measured the emotions, facial movements, head orientation, and speech characteristics in each sender's videos. While receivers used these cues to form their beliefs, they either concentrated on indicators that did not actually predict truthfulness, or the effects were in the wrong direction. For example, receivers were less likely to believe videos in which senders said fewer words or appeared happier, but such videos were actually more likely to be true. This systematic misuse of cues helps explain a second key finding. Receivers believed they were better at detecting lies than they actually were. While actual accuracy was close to 50%, receivers believed their accuracy was around 65%. And when asked to assess their ability relative to others, 61.9% of receivers believed they were in the second quartile of performance, less than 1.6% believed they were in the bottom quartile, and men were more overconfident than women. Thus, individuals are bad at detecting lies, yet are overconfident in their ability to do so. What are the implications for how lies spread? To investigate, the authors extended the experiment to include two receivers. R1 watched eight videos and was incentivized to guess whether each was true or false. R2 was then shown the pictures and titles for the same eight videos and chose four of them to watch, knowing they would be asked to assess the truthfulness of each one. The key, however, is that after watching their videos, R1 chose one of the eight videos to share with R2. This information was revealed to R2 before they chose their four videos to watch. To control for different motivations for sharing, 
there were two different treatment groups. In the first, R1 was paid a bonus if R2 picked the shared video to watch and that video was true. In the second, R1 was paid if R2 picked the shared video and believed it to be true. In both cases, R2 was fully informed of R1's incentive structure. And the results show that lies were shared more often than truthful videos. Even though R1 was explicitly incentivized to share either true or believable videos, between 58 and 62% of the videos shared were lies. At the same time, shared videos were also trusted more. When R1 was incentivized to share a truthful video, knowing that a video was shared increased the probability that R2 would watch it and believe it to be true. Again, this is despite the fact that shared videos were actually more likely to be false. These findings help explain how lies spread. Lies are shared more often, and shared news tends to be trusted more. Interestingly, however, the perceived intention behind sharing also matters. When R1 was incentivized to share a believable video, as distinct from a true video, knowing a video was shared did not affect R2's beliefs. Thus, it may be the perceived intention to share truthful videos that fuels the spread of lies and misinformation. In conclusion, this paper provides experimental evidence on sharing and detecting lies. Individuals are overconfident, yet bad at detecting lies, and this, combined with the dynamics of sharing, can help lies spread. Exploring how these effects manifest in real-world settings, such as on social media platforms, is an important area for future research. To read more on this topic, you can check out the paper's references to other related work. These include papers on lie detection, the dynamics of sharing on social media, and the role of motivated beliefs in spreading misinformation.